Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. On the bench today, I have a product to review. So we have uh, Professional Digital Audio Create Outstanding Sound. Transmit Nature Music. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's transmit some nature music. Let's see what we got here in this box. I promised this company I would re review this. They sent it to me. Uh, a uh, owner's manual. Ooh, past QC. That's good. And we have some cables. Some USB thingy. Looks like one of those uh, optical fiber thingies. Oh, we have oh, a uh, it's a tube rolling around. Is that supposed to fit in there? Where's the other tube? Okay, we have power brick. No remote. And the device itself. One-handed here. Oh, there's the other tube. Hopefully it's in good shape. What kind of tubes are these? Looks like uh, all well, the little pins in there. Looks like it's a pinto dish type thing. Anyway, let me unwrap this. I can't do this one handed. Okay, so we have a Dauk. Dauk. I don't know how you pronounce that. Audio. ST-01 Pro. So we got a neat little meter here. Volume. It seems to be an encoder wheel. Push button. We have tone controls. These look like they're indicator lights for the mode you're in. On the top we have sockets for tubes. On the sides there are vents. And here's the back. And look at all of these inputs we have here. We have Bluetooth, USB, RCA, coax optical, and uh, PC USB. We have the outputs here for the speakers, a line out, and power input. And that says, what does that say? Oh, 18 to 30 volts. Okay, got this thing hooked up to speakers and source. Give it a little test here. So let's power this up. Um, the light is on. I think I need the RTFM. How do you turn this on? Oh, a quick press, I guess. I was holding it down too long. All right. So it's, it's on uh, Bluetooth, I guess. It's looking for a signal. But yeah, look at that. I like that meter there. Lights up kind of a amber color. And uh, you can see the tube cathodes glowing. I don't really see any like LED. You know, they have the LED light. Now I guess there's something down there. It's kind of a dim glow. It is an LED because it's coming up from the base. But it's really dim. It kind of adds to the effect of the glowing cathodes. 
because these small signal tubes are not going to be that bright as far as the glow from the cathodes go. So yeah, it's kind of a nice touch. It's got the rings around it, the uh, kind of the, not really copper, kind of a, uh, metallic orange, I guess you could say. But anyhow, let's uh, give it a, a quick music listen here. I'll set the tone controls to 12 o'clock position. And uh, let's give it a whirl. Okay, well, it sounds pretty good to me. It does sound a little bassy, though. We'll have to do a frequency response test to see you know, if it's actually flat or not, if these controls are really flat at the 12 o'clock position. What about noise? There is some hiss. I'd say it's a moderate amount. It's not as low as I've heard, but it's not awful either. I think it's based on the TPA3116. Well, see if I can check that out. Okay, let's do some power measurements. Have the load hooked up here. The scope one channel, it'll be both channels driven. And we'll start with 8 ohm loads. There's clipping. And we'll dial that out. And as usual with these class D amps, you get a little bit of fuzz on the top and bottom. It's a little harder to determine the exact point of clipping. I'll go right there and get some more waveforms on the screen to get an accurate voltage measurement. And it looks like 15.64 volts RMS. I also took the 4 ohm measurement and completely without surprise to me, if you watch this channel, you know, a 24 volt supply, a bridge type output of a class D amp is going to be around 50 volts or I'm sorry 50 watts and yeah that's what we end up with 50 just shy of 53 watts into 4 ohms okay so now let's run a frequency response test but right before I do that I want to see the action of these tone controls especially with a 1 kilohertz signal I, I don't want to see much of an effect on the amplitude of that signal. So this is the base control turning it down and you see it didn't have an effect. Kind of strange is a slight little bump at let's say 10 o'clock or so. So yeah let me turn that back flat and now the treble control turn that down turn all the way up so a very slight effect, probably not audible. So I would say the uh, tone control action is very good. So let me make sure the controls are set flat here and we'll do the frequency response. Okay, frequency response test. So I have these levels set. The peak at this graticule and the bottom peak is at that graticule. And we'll uh, run the frequency down okay we're rolling off at around 6 Hertz so I'd say that's pretty good at 11 we're almost there so it's really flat at 16 ignore what this says this is just not making any sense with the actual frequency. I think it's picking up some of the uh, switch mode noise that gets through and confuses the uh, measurement but right now that's 20 Hertz so it's a very good bass response nice and flat now let's take it up see how the high frequencies go
Okay, as I turn this thing up, we're about 3 dB down at 15 kilohertz. And that's at 4 ohms, so the coils must be designed for 8. Let's try it at 8 here. Yeah, it's really flat here, still at 8. Let's take it up. Okay, that's 20. And it's perfectly flat. But look at 8 ohm, or 4 ohms again. Yeah, it's uh, lost quite a bit of amplitude at 4 ohms. And it's perfectly flat at 8. So yeah, obviously, like I say, the coils are designed for 8 ohms. We'll just roll it till it looks like around 45 hertz is its 3 dB down point at 8 ohms. So yeah, this thing is geared more for 8 ohm loads because it's 3 dB down at 15 kilohertz with 4 ohm loads. Okay, so I tore this thing down. It wasn't too difficult to get into. It's a double-decker style board here. At the top we have the tubes. I'm not seeing any switch mode supply on here for a higher plate voltage. So I'm not sure what they're doing there. And that's some Bluetooth and DAC chips and USB controller stuff here. I'll, I'm not going to look any of this stuff up. I'll just put it on camera so you can search for data sheets if you want. So there you go. Rubicon caps. Probably an encoder chip since that's the encoder type wheel for the volume control. The bottom board here is the uh, tone and power amp power supply. So on the tone and probably preamp, these are 3552 chips, op amps. This is not a TPA3116. The power amp is a TPA3250 it looks like, Texas Instruments. One thing very odd I'm seeing here is this heat sink mounts to the top of the chip and you know that's the epoxy side the thermal pad you know that metal pad is facing down so they're extracting heat through a poor conductor I looked at the data sheet the thermal resistance through the top of the chip is 10.2 I believe it was Celsius per watt so for every watt it'll rise 10.4 degrees Celsius. So, you know, this is putting out around 50 watts per channel if you're pushing it. You know, you're playing a lot of bass music with a lot of continuous bass tones. You know, that's 100 watts total, and if the chip is about 90% efficient, let's say, you know, that's 10 watts. It's got to pass through that. And at that thermal resistance, you're going to have a about a hundred degree Celsius thermal rise. That's pretty significant. Though uh, you will lose some through the bottom. So to me, you know, with the, with the filtering and you know the way this is designed, I would stick with eight ohm speakers with this amp. So anyway, notice this control. I don't know what that's all about. I'll have to uh, check that out. Anything else? Uh, the power supply filter cap is a 3300 microfarad. Uh, there's a relay. I can hear that clicking when I switch between modes. My noisy heater turned on, so... Yeah, I'm going to wrap it up here and put this thing back together. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up here. Like I said, I'm not going to get into all the 
different digital interfaces and how that works and everything. I'm mostly interested in the uh, amplifier performance. So, what do I think of this thing? Well, I really like the looks. It's one of the nicest looking mini amps I've tested. Sounds pretty good. I don't have any issues with the audio quality. I listen to different types of music at higher and lower levels. Sounds fine to me. No issues there. That control on the bottom is for the meter. So if you listen at a certain level and you want the meter to correspond better, you can adjust that. Okay, so once again, I measured the power to be 30.6 watts at 8 ohms, 52.8. 4 ohms, very typical with 24 volt supply with these bridge type class D amplifiers. Measured the gain at 27.2 times and I take that measurement with the volume all the way up and measure the output voltage versus the input voltage. And as I mentioned, noise is kind of moderate, you know, just the background hiss it's not as low as some of the others, and it's not as bad as some amplifiers. I think it's uh, pretty much a non-issue when listening to music. Though if you have ultra-sensitive speakers, you might notice background hiss when the amplifier is sitting idle. Uh, I like the tone control action. It doesn't affect the mid-range around 1 kilohertz. That's what that one test was all about. Uh, flat frequency response at 8 ohms. Uh, questionable thermals. I mentioned that, as I said earlier, with 4 ohm loads. If you're really going to push the amp, I wouldn't use 4 ohm speakers. You can certainly use 4 ohm speakers at lower volumes, but just remember the frequency response is 3 dB down at around 15 kilohertz. So that will do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.